If you want to finally master Adobe Lightroom and level up your image editing skills, then stick around because I'm sharing seven essential beginner tips that if you just focus on those, you will improve your photos and increase your general understanding of Adobe Lightroom. Hi everyone, I'm Patrick, wildlife photographer from Northeast Germany and today I'm excited to help you level up your Adobe Lightroom skills with seven tips that I've been using myself for years to transform my pictures from this to this or this to this. If you're new to Adobe Lightroom or even image editing in general, then you might import your images, edit them by playing around a little bit, export them, put them on the internet and then hope for the best. That's what I did in the beginning, but I always had a feeling that I was missing out on the real potential of working with RAW files. If that sounds familiar to you, I've got good news because there is a better way. Whether you completely new to this or you building up on existing Lightroom skills, the following seven tips will be for you. If you stick around until the end of the video, I've got a bonus tip for you that you might not see coming. Lightroom is more than just editing. It's a powerful tool to organize, mark, group, and edit. Tip number one starts right in the beginning. Import your photos the right way. In the import mask, you get to make a bunch of choices to bring in your images into Lightroom in a way that makes it easier to find them and navigate through your entire image library when it's time to edit them. These are the three most important options. In the file handling section, you get to decide which type of preview you would like to create. You get to choose between four different uh, options, minimal, embedded and sidecar, standard and one-on-one. -on -one. And the first two options, they are a lower resolution preview. The last two options are of higher resolution. This, that means depending on what kind of preview you choose, you get to look at an image in a lower or higher resolution. Below that, you get to decide whether you want to build smart previews. Smart previews can help you when you travel. You don't have to have the original file with you. With a smart preview, you actually edit the smart preview and then whenever you're back home, you can connect to your uh, storage again and then everything gets synced. If you don't build them, you don't get that option. You always have to have the original file with you. File renaming happens within the camera already, so I don't touch this here at all. Next, you can apply keywords that describe the images you are importing. And this step can and should be repeated whenever you narrow down your library. Usually, there are many different images included in your initial import, which won't allow for very specific keywording. So do that again whenever possible to get your image tagged as specific as possible. The third part is the destination section. And here you get to create a meaningful folder structure that allows for an effective organization of your images. Whether you do that at this point or you prepare this folder structure beforehand, both is possible. In my case, it looks like this. In the root of my folder structure, I divided stills and video since I shoot both and I'd like it separated from here on. Most of my photos are wildlife, but I do shoot other genres as well, so I have a folder for each one. Two factors that are the most important to me is location and date. I'd like to know where the image was taken and when. This folder structure or your folder structure can look very different for you. There is no right or wrong. It's just a matter of finding what works best for you. When you now import your images, you'll have them organized, tagged and prepared for a much simpler editing workflow. Tip number two, highlight the progress of your images inside folders or projects. Personally, I'm really bad at keeping my image library up to date. Right now, I still have to go through images and folders from last year. In order to keep an overview over that, I marked my folders by color. Red means nothing done since the import. Yellow images are organized and narrowed down to the final selection, but not yet edited. And green, final selection has been made, images are edited and ready to use. As before, 
this can look very different, different colors, different naming convention or something else. The point here is to make progress, keep your library clean and organized and avoid being overwhelmed. For the next step, build a mental model of what you want to achieve with your edit. Let's assume you have an image selected for your next edit. It can be a huge help to stop right there and think about the image. What do you want to achieve? What do you want to express? What do you want your viewers to feel or to see? I'm not speaking about specific values for these sliders at this point, rather more general stuff. Do I need to brighten it? Do I need to darken it? Do I need to crop it? Stuff like this. Just think about it for a moment so that you go into the edit with a purpose instead of freestyling it. Freestyling is also a very valid approach, but especially in the beginning and if you're still trying to find what works best for you, it can always help to stick to some sort of guideline, at least to some extent, and work along that. And then when you're more experienced, you will feel it becomes more natural to you and you don't have to rely on some guideline or some framework to achieve what you're trying to achieve. The following tip almost feels a little bit like back in school when your teacher told you you're not allowed using a calculator for the calculation. And I'm not pretending to be that teacher when I'm telling you to stay away from presets. The develop module offers a bunch of presets. Presets can transform your pictures just like this, but especially if you're still learning and that's your goal, you should avoid using them for now. There is a time and place to use them if they're used correctly, but for now, keep editing without them. Tip number five, divide your images into layers and keep them separated. What I mean by this, think of a painter who usually starts with a blank canvas, then adds a first layer of paint to create the motif and only then goes into the finest of details. Now you can do the same with your images. Think of your raw file as the canvas that you want to prepare. But before anything else, you do your cropping if necessary, straightening, remove dust, all of the stuff that has to do with the canvas that you're trying to prepare for what's to come. And you can find all of these options above the basic selection or inside the transform selection in the develop module. At this point, you have a blank canvas to edit on. I split my edits into two more layers global edits and local edits. Global edits affect the whole picture, so the whole picture gets saturated, desaturated or brightened, darkened, whatever. And then the local edits that are only applied to certain parts or for example the subject of the picture. You can even take this a step further and break up these three layers, so canvas, global edits and local edits even more if that works for you. For me, this framework of breaking images up in three layers and concentrate on each at a time um, has helped me to improve my editing and also I'm way more happier with, my, with the way my pictures come out. This next tip goes hand in hand with staying away from presets. No two images are the same. Two images of two different subjects in two different environments taken with different camera settings will not look the same. If they don't look the same, why should they receive the same treatment during editing? That unified treatment essentially is what a preset is. And beside the fact that you won't learn much, in my opinion, it's not that easy to just simply throw on presets on different pictures and expect the outcome the way you want, them, want it to be. Each individual picture needs some different treatment, with one exception, which is when you take burst sh uh, shots, where you take many pictures, many frames, in a very short amount of time. Uh, the subject might move in the frame, but the general environment stays the same. Those images do look very similar, at least. And here, it could work to use a preset. That's my mindset to look at each photo individually and give it an individual treatment. The last tip will require you to play around a bit in, in Lightroom. Understand the functionalities and impacts of the develop module. In order to really understand what you're doing, you will have to think about it. And especially in the beginning, it'll take you longer to understand what you've just done by moving one slider to the right. That will come with time and experience. I find it very important to not just see what you're doing and see what you're changing in your image, but rather to understand it, to fully understand it. That way you can really take advantage of raw files. 
when you know that if you do X, that's the outcome that you can get from it. Or if you ask yourself questions, why am I doing this right now? Is this really necessary? Only then and only when you really understand what you're doing, the whole process becomes way more clearer and it's a lot easier for you to predict what might happen and that way you can really build your image bit by bit until you're happy with it. And as promised, last but not least, I've got one bonus tip for you and I think it might surprise you because it sounds counterintuitive to when you want to learn something, you'll obviously have to spend a lot of time doing it. But my bonus tip is take breaks. Because especially since you're sitting on a computer or looking at a screen while you edit, you will get tired. When you hit that stage, your eyes might even work against you because you're seeing things that are not there or you, you're misjudging things or you get too attached to something. So it can help to take breaks, to just get away from the computer, whether it's minutes or hours or even days sometimes. Sometimes I stay away from the computer for days. Or when you come back, you will be surprised how different you see an image that you left at a certain stage. Sometimes that happened to me. You might even discard everything and start from scratch because you realize you've gone a wrong direction with it. So here you have it. Seven essential tips to master Lightroom. It's way more than just editing, but I believe if you focus on these tips for now, your learning curve will be a steep one. Right now I'm working on a video to show you how you can find your own style within Lightroom. Once that's done, I will also link it down in the description box. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more tips like this, and share your beginner tips for Lightroom down in the comments. I'm really interested in how you found your way around that software. If you want to see some of the things that I talked about in action, you can head over to the Adobe Lightroom playlist on my channel where I show some of my editing workflows in action. For this, you can just click the card on the screen now and I'll see you in the next video. Happy editing. Bye-bye.